Hi guys, my name is Tanya and this is my January wrap up. Which is crazy because that means that it's already February and I'm not ready for time to go that fast. <laughs> I actually had a really good start to the year in terms of reading. I read five books in the month of January and it was probably entirely escapism because the world is falling to pieces. But anyway, let's talk about books. The first book that I finished reading in 2017 was The Sun Is Also A Star by Nicola Yoon. And in this we follow Natasha, who is a logical girl with firm beliefs in rational and provable facts, and Daniel, who's always tried to live up to his parents' expectations of him. We follow them as they meet and for one day explore the possibilities of love and who they're meant to be before Natasha is potentially deported back to Jamaica with her family. I absolutely adored the narration of this book. Although we we primarily follow Natasha and Daniel and it flips back and forth between them. A lot of chapters are also kind of side chapters that look at facts from the science and arts and we also hear from the points of view of different side characters with what's going on in their lives and that gives us a really interesting look into the ideas of cause and effect and overall it just makes for a much deeper view than I thought we were going to get of just that single 24 hour period in which Daniel and Natasha meet. And maybe the romance in this book isn't plausible but it is adorable and the ending of this book is actually actually very aware of itself and the potential implausibility of what has happened. And it's kind of sad but also hopeful. <laughs> and as Natasha is from Jamaica but has lived in the US for the majority of her memorable life, and Daniel was born in the US but his parents are originally from Korea, this book has some really interesting points about heritage and how living in the US, whether you were born there or not, can affect that. Overall this is just a gorgeously written book which projects a really adorable romance whilst also being aware of the problems with this and projecting at the end of it all a very realistic outcome and I rated it four out of five stars. The next book that I read in January was The Vegetarian by Han Kang. I will say straight up that I struggled with this book a lot and to be honest that is a lot more to do with personal taste than it is to do with the book itself. This is the story of Young Hai who is considered completely unremarkable and average until she turns vegetarian overnight. The story is divided into three sections, each of which is written from a different point of view. The first is from the point of view of Young Hai's husband who is mortified by his wife and records not only his backlash but also the backlash from society and his family towards her newfound vegetarianism. We then hear from her brother-in-law who becomes obsessed with her body in relation to his erotic video artwork. And finally, we move on to her sister's point of view as everything falls apart. Although the work is translated, from the three sections, you can tell that the author has allowed herself to explore a variety of different writing styles across the novel. And that is ultimately what kept me reading as it was really interesting to see. And my struggle with this work was primarily based on its dealings with the entitled male gaze. In the first section, we hear from the self-centered and arrogant husband who spends the chapter justifying his awful dream of her before we move on to her brother-in-law who is aware of his sense of self-entitlement but he doesn't try to resist that and I am aware that this is an important topic to cover and this book does it really well I just found it incredibly difficult to read there are also some scenes that would best be described as animal torture and as a vegan I just found that really hard to read so overall I rated this two stars but it is entirely due to personal perspective and not the quality of this book which is very high the third book that I read in January was A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. I read this in the 24 hours leading up to me going to see the film adaptation of this in the cinema and this book was absolutely stunning. <laughs> Connor is 13 years old and living with his incredibly ill mother. When he is visited by a monster it's not what he was expecting. Rather than the monster that haunts his night- rather than the monster that has haunted his nightmares since his mum began her treatment, the monster that visits him trades in stories and wants to know Connor's terrible truth. Whilst being simultaneously dark but humorous, this book explores potential loss and all of the anger and frustrations and sadness that can go with that. And the artwork by Jim Kay is also glorious in all of its dark colourlessness. And half an hour before I saw the film, which is also fantastic, this book received my highest five star accolade, which is that it made me cry in a Starbucks. The next book that I read was Homegoing by Yajasi. I read this for the Diversathon, which ran from the 22nd to the 29th of January, and this was the only book that I read during that readathon because I read about a book a week and there's nothing I can do about it. This was on so many people's lists of their top books from 2016 but it only came out in the UK in January and I was so happy to finally get a copy and it was super duper worth it. This book follows the families of two half-sisters, Effia and Essie, who never meet. One is sold into slavery whilst the other becomes the wife of a slaver and the most frustrating quirk of this novel is also my favourite part of it and that is how every chapter moves forwards to a new character 
one descendant of each sister from each generation. Whilst this means that we never quite get everyone's full story and we have to fill in a lot of information, it also allows the story to cover a lot of history very, very quickly, which is incredibly affecting in its own way, as it shows us the effect that the slave trade had on generations of people rather than just a couple of characters. The broad span of characters also allows Jersey to explore a range of often heartbreaking topics within her overarching theme, from drugs to sexuality and all types of loss. Overall, this was an incredibly written book that made me care about every character we were introduced to, which I wasn't expecting to happen. And this made me think a lot harder about history than a drier source might have done, and I rated it five stars. And the final book that I read in January was Keeping Her Secret by Sarah Nicholas. This is a summer camp story which follows childhood friends Raya and Courtney as they are reunited after a long time apart, having not spoken since they kissed the last time they saw each other. Yes, there are arguments and some drama, but for the most part, the attraction in this book is covered up with a ridiculous prank war, and it's just gloriously good fun. Raya is an openly bisexual character, and it allowed for a really good discussion about the difference between attraction and actual personal chemistry, and I really appreciated how this book also dealt with being in denial and how that can feel. I don't really have a lot to say about this book, it was just cute good fun, and I rated it three and a half out of five stars. So yeah, those were the books that I read in January. They were a pretty broad mix. I think broad is my word of the month. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them. I hope that you're having a lovely February so far and that you're having an amazing day and I will see you all again very soon. Goodbye!